<clears throat> excuse me. So now let's go to these plagues. Let's go to these plagues, right? We're gonna do like a parallel here. We're gonna we're gonna do like a parallel here, right? Let me pull up this this website real quick. Copy. Um. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we're going to do like a parallel. We're going to go through the plagues in ancient Egypt. All right. Here's the meat. Here's the meat of it. Here's what all you guys came to see. What the plagues are going to be that, that comes to America that are like the same plagues of ancient Egypt. So we're going to look at the ancient plagues here for literal Egypt. And then we're going to look at the plagues that are coming on Mystery Babylon, which is spiritual Egypt, also known as America. <clears throat> so Revelation 16 and 1. Revelation 16 and 1. What does it say? And I heard a great voice. And I heard a great voice. Coming, I'm sorry, hold on one second. <clears throat> All right. All praises. Oh. <laughs> I gotta stand up. I gotta stand up for this. This is so this is so powerful. I gotta stand up for it. No, I'm just standing up because I couldn't feel my legs anymore. Um Revelation 16 and 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying, let's break this down slowly. Where is this temple at? Anybody? What temple is this? Let's get the chat involved here. What temple is this, y'all? We're going to learn together. This is called hands-on. This is called hands-on learning. What temple is this? Revelation 16 and 1. <laughs> yes spiritual temple spiritual temple in revelation 16 and 1 that's the spiritual temple in the heavens you ever heard as above so below and when you read hebrews i believe it says the pattern of the old structure came from heaven why because there's the spiritual temple the spiritual altar in the heavens and the one on earth remember your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so when we look at the temple that we have now, Ezekiel's temple, which is the third temple, you will see that these dimensions are only mimicking the temple in the heavens. Isaiah 6 and 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train Fill the temple. So this isn't a New Testament concept, the spiritual temple. We've always seen this. Yes, in the third heaven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. So these are seraphims, also called fiery flying serpents. <clears throat> and these are all around the temple and throne of the heavenly father, right? He's on the throne here. Of course, this is a vision. And one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. You guys understand in the ancient temple, the holies of holies, they would have to, in, in the temple as well, as a whole, they would have to burn these incense and it will be filled with smoke as above, so below. Right? <clears throat> then I said, woe is me, for I am undone. Here the prophet Isaiah is saying that he's not even worthy to be in this trance right now. Whether he's out of the body or inside of the body because I am a man of unclean lips. Here it is, the prophet of Isaiah, so humble to be in the Lord's presence, right? 
and saying, woe is me, meaning destruction to me because I'm not worthy to be here. But some guys will tell you that they are the Apostle Paul in the reincarnation. They're of the one third and they are of the elect. And <laughs> and they can tell you who's a two third and, and, and who's not in Christ, right? So it says, and I dwell in the midst of, of people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, right? Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. There's a whole altar in that spiritual temple up there. See that? So back in Revelation 16, I just wanted to take my time to really expound and elaborate and exegete the pericope here right so verse one uh so a voice saying to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of the wrath of god upon the earth why don't christians ever talk about this oh jesus i say this all the time oh jesus wants to be in love with you he wants to love you he wants to it's all about love god is love <laughs> he has seven vials that he's about to pour out on this place is that love or is it wrath look it says wrath <laughs> it says wrath <clears throat> how's my audio y'all how's my audio please let me know how my audio is because i'm like standing up all right so verse two verse two so what was the first plague the first plague was blood, so the water turned to blood. Let's just go over some of these first, uh, first plagues real quick. Uh, so the water turned to blood. The water turned to blood. I want you guys to, to really remember this because you're going to see how these same plagues, spiritually and literally, are finna come to America. Watch this. So it says blood, frogs. Keep that in mind. I might have to isolate this part. Blood, frogs, bugs, wild animals, pestilence, boils. Keep that in mind too. Boils, hail, meaning like hail that looks like snow, right? Locusts, keep that in mind. Darkness. The whole kingdom plunges into darkness. Keep that in mind. And the death of the firstborns. Keep that in mind, y'all. Matter of fact, let me pull this scripture up real quick, too, so I don't forget. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right, so let's go back to Revelation 16. Back to Revelation 16. <clears throat> Verse 2, Revelation 16 and 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Let me read that again. And there... And, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worship his image. The sore, when you look this up in the Greek, is dealing with a boil. It's dealing with a boil on your skin. Wait a second. Did we see it? boils in the ancient plagues? Sure did. The sixth plague put boils, sores on everybody. See, this is how we know America is spiritually Egypt. They're getting the same plagues. But listen, it gets worse. It gets better than that. When you deal with <clears throat> the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip. Now, you got some camps out there, some congregations, who believe the mark of the beast is like just believing in Christianity. So... <laughs> What they would be saying is, whoever believes on, in Christianity, a sore came on them. <laughs> I'm sorry, like I said, 
I'll help you. I'll, <clears throat> I'll buy your dog. I'll buy your baby some Pampers. I'll help you on your light bill. I'll drive you where you need to go if you don't have no transportation. I'll stand in front of a bullet for you, but it, 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 it's ridiculously stupid, right? So when we look at the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, right? Look at this. These chips going under your skin are known to cause sores. And when you look at this word, it's like, a matter of fact, let's go to the blue letter. Let's go to the blue letter. <clears throat> Let's go to the blue letter here. Revelation 16. Revelation 16. So let's get this word in the Greek here. So let's see, it says, poured out his vial and a noisome, let's see. Uh, so evil thing of bad nature of more things in the base wrong, troublesome, injured, destructive, apparently bad, injurious, injurious. So it's definitely physical. And then we want to go to grievous, grievous. Let's see, grievous, evil, that's a bad nature. Uh, an ethnic, an evil and wicked thing, an evil and wicked thing in which the mark of the beast is. So let's also get this word for noisome, grievous. Let's get this word sore here. Let's get the word for sore. A wound producing a discharge pus, a sore and ulcer, right? Now, what I want to do is I want to Bear with me a second, y'all. I want to do some com what we call comparative translation. Uh, Bible Hub. <laughs> we went here before. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast. Um, a, a malignant sore. I want you guys to keep that in mind. Malignant sore, a malignant sore. Here's another one. A malignant sore. What does malignant mean? Malignant. Malignant. What happened to malignant? Uh, what the definition? What's the definition? Okay, here we go. So it says very serious danger, tending to like grow spread in a rapid uncontrolled way. Here we go. A form of cancer. So this is what I want to show you guys. A form of cancer. So when you really go into it, this sore is a form of cancer that is going to appear above the skin as a boil, but a cancer is also a tumor. So I want to, I want to. Make sure we're clear here. When it says the sores, it's talking about a malignant sore. Malignant is a form of cancer, which cancer is a tumor. Keep that in mind. A form of cancer, which cancer is a tumor, but above the skin, it's going to create a boil, a sore, right? So we look at this article here. Where's that article I was just at? Right here. Okay, here we go. Microchipped induced tumors and laboratory rodents and dogs. Anybody can look at this article, you can look it up. Microchip induced tumors in laboratory rodents and dogs because they experiment on them first. So on these, it says, when they put these RFID chip microchips in these rodents, some of them got boils, sores, and tumors. Well, that's what the book says, right? Where's it at? Here we go. In addition to the six studies that identified cancer in rodents, two studies evaluated cancerous tumors that develop in dogs at the site of the microchip implant. Understand that? So when we go back to Revelation, we understand that it's got to be a physical thing and it's going to cause sores, boils, 
that will appear on top of your skin, but it's also dealing with malignant tumors under your skin, which can be caused by the an RFID chip micro an RFID microchip being implanted in you. Right? So let's keep going. So we see the boils here, the sores on your skin, right? And we, we mentioned that in the ancient plagues, boils, right? So let's keep going. And the second angel, the second angel, <clears throat> the second angel, Bible Defender 144, Bible Defender 144. I'm pretty sure, I want everybody to look at your comment, but because they don't like when you talk about that, I can't speak on that. I can't speak on that unless I want to get my whole damn channel taken down. But I will say this, that Michael Jordan, Westbrook fadeaway, oh, it's a great jump shot. He's just got a great jump shot. But his jump shot can def all not can, does definitely cause <laughs> injurious practices to those guarding him. If you guys can read between the lines, read between the lines. If you can't get it, you can't, most high ain't dealing with you. <laughs> but I like everybody to take a look at his comment because that's facts. Right? So now, verse three. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. Can we find the waters being turned red? In, in the ancient plagues? Of course. First, the waters of the land of Egypt were turned into blood. Was it actually blood? No, it's called red algae, right? Well, that's been happening here in the Americas, but it's gonna magnify, right? So we see, we see you guys see the parallel here? You guys see the parallel here? Let's keep going. And every living soul died in the sea. Now, is everything going to die in the sea? No, because we wouldn't have any aquatic life or, or aquatic food. But a lot of creatures, which they already have, have been washing to shore, dead in masses. Why? It's a sign of the end times, right? So let's keep going. <clears throat> and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. Same thing. This is it's all for a sign. When you wake up and, and, and you, you go to Lake Shasta or, or, or <laughs> the Great Lakes over there in the Michigans or Lake Mead or even the Red Sea in the Middle East, and you see it all red, you're going to freak out. Why? Because it's a sign. Even the moon turned into blood or appearing to look like, you know, a blood, a blood moon. It's a sign, right? That's what the Bible says. Verse five. And I heard the angel of the water say, thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be because thou has judged thus. So America's got judgment coming, right? Verse six. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. We're here in the Americas. Wherever this place is, they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. And why ain't God coming back to avenge everybody? He's saying that these plagues are only for the people who shed the blood of the Israelites. Only the Israelites can be saints. Only the Israelites can be prophets. That's what the book says. You understand? And thou has given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. So all you Gentiles are worthy for, according to the Bible, is blood to drink because you drunk off our blood. You handed us a cup, so therefore that cup got to pass through to you. Verse 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, True and righteous are thy judgments. So this is a righteous thing. You ask a Christian, is it righteous for God to kill every animal in the sea? No, he would never do that. You guys don't know who God is. 
is it righteous for God to put malignant sores on people? No, he would never do that. What God are you guys serving? What God are you guys serving? Uh, verse eight, <clears throat> let's keep going. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. You guys see that? So what is this? We already went through this before y'all. Now, I don't think this is this. I, I didn't say that they were exactly the same. I said eerie similar. So over in the ancient plagues, I do not see Oh, yeah, we don't see um, the sun scorching men with fire. <clears throat> but this is dealing with what you would call today a solar flare. That's right, Brother Trey Wright, a solar flare. And this is how God uses nature to punish kingdoms, to punish the earth or, or people on the earth for that matter. Right. So let's continue. Verse nine, and men were scorched with great heat and blaspheme the name of God. So we talked about this last time. When you take that mark of the beast, it puts you in a zombie state because if you're if you're getting scorched with fire, naturally you're going to say God, I repent, forgive me. <laughs> Have mercy on me. But because the chip can alter your mind and 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 take over your your mainframe, your mental faculties and capacity, you're not going to be thinking right. You're going to be in a zombified state. How are you getting scorched with fire and not repenting? But but on the contrary, you're blaspheming the most high still. Because you won't be in your right mind at that point. Which have power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory. Mind control. Exactly, brother. Now, look at this. <clears throat> So it says, verse 10, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. What is the beast? The beast is America. I'm sorry, the beast is NATO and EU, this whole revised Roman Empire. But the seat of it, meaning who's leading it, is America. Remember it said the harlot, the woman, was sitting on the beast. That's And the woman is Babylon, which is America. So America is sitting at the top of NATO and EU, being the, the, the spearhead if you will, of that empire. See, but this vial is only going to get poured on the seat of the beast, right? And his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. <clears throat> well, can we see <clears throat> in ancient Egypt, darkness covering the land? Absolutely. That's plague nine. Then followed the ninth plague, for several days, all of Egypt was enveloped in a thick and in, impenetrable veil of darkness, which extinguished all lights kindled. The Egyptians were gripped with fear and remained glued to their places wherever they st stood or sat. You understand? So in ancient Egypt, they had the plague where the whole kingdom was plunged into darkness. Then we see the plague that's coming on America, Mystery Babylon, uh, Revelation 16 and 10. It says, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Why? Because if the kingdom's full of darkness, like uh, Malak said, you got what's called an extreme purge. An extreme purge coming at that point. An extreme purge. We'll see how you Christians deal with that. See if you go around loving everybody when they're coming at your head with old English bottles and 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 rails from their bunk beds, kids' bunk beds trying to knock your heads off, right? Now, how is that going to happen in today's time? We believe an EMP, an electric magnetic pulse, which is a basically a bomb that explodes in the air to shut off your power grid into which America's already saying that that's going to happen to them really soon. That is not a, 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 a surprise, surprisingly surprising news. This is a common thing. Even uh, the, the generals, military generals say 
that America will probably get hit with an EMP and that's going to plunge the whole uh, 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 kingdom here into darkness, right? So let's continue. <clears throat> and blaspheme the God, verse 11, and blaspheme the God of heaven. Blaspheme the God of heaven. <laughs> uh, Salakia. Uh, and verse 11, and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their swords and repented not for their deeds, of their deeds rather. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the waters was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So there is a vial. Uh... <clears throat> pros need to finish the job on time and on budget. Lowe's has the appliances pros need, including the largest selection. So we dealt with, that's drying up the waters. I'm going to go back over these in a second because some of these plagues are not in Revelation 16, but they are in other places of Revelation. So we're going to go back over them in just a second. So you, the Euphrates River is drying up. Why? Why is the Euphrates River drying up? So that the, the, the tanks, the convoy can march across to get ready for Armageddon or the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the end all be all war. That's what has to happen. How is it going to dry up? We used to think that it was just going to be so hot on the earth that the Euphrates River would dry up. Then we realized that the so-called Al Qaeda and Taliban, they were building dams on the Euphrates so that it would dry up in certain spots so that they could cross or make bridges. So it's very, even we've seen that, um, that, 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 uh, that cargo ship get stuck in the Euphrates, it was causing it to dry up in certain places. So although we know the most high is miraculous, he still operates within the realm of practicality, right? So <clears throat> this is very interesting, verse 13. Verse 13. So it says frogs, right? Now look at this. In ancient Egypt, uh, the water to northern kingdom of Israel. <clears throat> oh, maybe another time, brother. Maybe another time for that. But the water, Yahabashim, Yahshai, Brachatah. But what I will say is this. The proof that those, uh, every, every, here's what Israelites have to understand. Every Jew claiming to be Jewish is not Amalek. All right. Because you have uh, Sephardic, Mizrahi, Khazarian, um, Ashkenaz, right? So as far as the Ashkenaz and Khazars, those would be the the Amalekites. Now the Mizrahi, those are the the like Arab Arab El Elamic converts. They look Arab, but they're 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 calling they're 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 subscribing to be <laughs> Jews, right? So you gotta you gotta you can't group all so called you know Jewish people into the group of Amalekites. <laughs> all right, so. In ancient Egypt, they had the frogs. Can we find frogs in Revelation 16? Absolutely. But this one is a spiritual application. Now, let's read this real quick. Watch this. So it says, after due warning, the second plague came to Egypt. Aaron stretched forth his hand over the waters of Egypt, and frogs swarmed forth. They covered every inch of the land. I want you guys to hear this because there's a spiritual application. Every inch of the land, right? And entered the houses and bedrooms, wherever an Egyptian turned, whatever he touched, he found there the slimy bodies of frogs, the croakings of which filled the air, now, Pharaoh became frightened, and he asked Moses and Aaron to pray that God remove this nuisance, promising that he would liberate the people. But as soon as the frogs disappeared, he broke his promise and refused to let the children of Israel go. Now, have y'all ever tried to 
catch a frog. It's so hard. It's so irritating, right? So you can only imagine a damn plague of frogs plaguing and covering and swarming a whole geographical locale. How crazy that that would be, right? So let's look at this though, y'all. Let's look at this spiritual application here. Revelation 16 and 13. Revelation 16 and 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. I always wondered, and I'm going to be real with you guys. It wasn't until a few days ago, because you don't want to just put a breakdown out there where, you know, you're winging it, right? So all this time, I always wonder why it's saying these unclean spirits are like frogs until just a few days ago. Many, many years, I wondered. I talked to Alizar about it. Like, why is it saying frogs? Until I realized that this is the plagues here are paralleling the plagues of ancient Egypt. The water brother Taj Yao Bashim Yashai Brakata for keeping that two dollar drive alive, brother. <laughs> but uh many, many years I said, man, why 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 is he liking them to frogs, right? So it finally hit me a few days ago in the spirit while I was just studying that these are actually paralleling. Um, the Egyptian plagues. So now it's liking these unclean spirits to frogs. Why? Because this is totally dealing with uh, spiritual Egypt, which is America. <clears throat> right? So it says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. That's dealing with, uh, I believe this is dealing with the whole empire the whole nato and eu empire and out of the mouth of the beast hmm because sometimes sometimes the dragon is referred to as satan and sometimes the dragon is referred to the red dragon as the revised roman empire so we'll just cover both it could be satan or the revised roman empire here and out of the mouth of the beast they cause America the whore and the beast in Revelation. But basically what this is saying is, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, the false prophet is dealing with whoever your pope is at the time this happens. Whoever your pope is at the time this happens is going to proclaim, prescribe, or get people to take the mark of the beast or take the Michael Jordan jump shot or... um uh, uh <clears throat> persuade or influence to do whatever Satan wants to do dealing with the revised Roman Empire Nate and the you and their agenda right so in short the dragon the beast and the false prophet are going to proclaim something or usher something in that is going to cause demonic and unclean spirits like frogs like the frogs of egypt to run rampant in this place frogs were everywhere frogs were in everybody's house that means you think it's wicked right now they're about to be unclean spirits on everybody this is why it's saying like frogs like how the frogs of egypt swarm the land well the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are going to cause unclean spirits to swarm this land even more so than it is now. Than they are now, rather. Right? Verse 14. Verse 14. For they are the spirit of devils, working miracles. So you might get the Pope to do some fake miracles. But again, spirit of devils, swarming everywhere like frogs, right? which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them together to battle, I'm sorry, to the to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. That's what's going to happen. Whoever the Pope is, whoever is the spokesman of NATO or EU and whoever the president is of America, they're all going to come together, implement more evil and try to usher in the kings of the world to a World War III, and ultimately to fight against who the world calls Christ. That's Revelation 19 and 2 Ezra 13. 
This is going to happen. Verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Uh, the Christian church is not watching. They don't know what current events are cohesive to prophecy. They don't know what the hell is going on. And keepeth his garment. Garment is your righteousness. Lest he walketh naked, meaning you be exposed. And they see his shame. Verse 16, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And now that's over there in the Middle East, also known as the Valley of Jehoshaphat, right? Verse 17, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there was voices, thunders, lightnings. And there was an earthquake such as not was since men were upon the earth so mighty earthquake and so that the city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and babylon came into remembrance right so that earthquake is all just dealing with what you would call a thermonuclear destruction here in daughter of babylon right so let's go back to some of these ancient plagues right so we dealt with the blood that's in revelation 16 the frogs are in Revelation 16 with a spiritual application of unclean spirits. We dealt with the bugs. Well, that wasn't in um, that wasn't in Revelation 16. Uh, the wild animals. We know that the Bible does say that He's going to cause wild animals to be released when all hell hell breaks loose, and they're going to start tearing dogs to tear, wild beasts to tear. That's coming to the Americas. Pestilence. Well, we're in a pestilence right now. Talking about all kind of diseases, you guys should have one in mind. Boils, we dealt with the boils. That's in Revelation 16. Hail, uh, it's just dealing with basically bad weather. You can see that in America right now. The locusts, on a spiritual application, Revelation 9 is dealing with the locusts, but that's dealing with World War One. But I would still say it's applicable. Um, and then nine, it would be the darkness, the darkness covering the land. That's in Revelation 16. And then uh, <laughs> um, the death of the firstborn. How can we spiritually apply that to this? Because who the world calls Christ is the firstborn of death. And he is going to inflict pain by way of his angels destroying this place and him also getting the task by the most high, the cause brick brazil russia india and china and america's allies to turn against it so um yeah so i want to i want to do something too i want to do something too all you now now i, I got a special announcement <laughs> you guys keep telling me to slow down i'm excited about this man rewind it and you guys will get it rewind it and you guys will get it i want to give a special announcement i want to give a special announcement a very special announcement all of you israelites out there all of you israelites out there who teach yahweh Yeh is the name of the lord who teach yahweh shy is the name of his son who believes that negroes latinos and native americans are israelites if you're under that one west umbrella then you need to know that the founder of us not the founder of you know everybody who believes they're israelite but the founders of what you would call one west the founder of one west would be a man by the name of let's see if y'all know all the camps you see out here gms iuic gocc hoi sakari watchman I mean, every every major camp you can think of, they all come from one West. And there was one man who the most high used to wake up to the truth in the 40s, maybe even the 30s, in the 40s. And um, <clears throat> the first brother, who, Abba Bivens, there you go. So if you believe what we believe, if you believe what we believe and you you teach what we teach, the this foundation not the intricate parts of the breakdown all right not the intricate parts of the breakdown but just the general foundation that you got to believe in the whole bible because there's some old testament only you got to believe in the whole bible you got to keep the law paul was writing to the israelite foreigners 
um, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are Israelites. The names are Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. America's Babylon. Esau is the white man. All of that comes from this man named Abba Bibbins from the 1940s when he started doing his work. And I believe he went all the way up to the 60s. You understand? Major, 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 major. So it's had it, it's been found out that he left a book behind that I surely didn't know about and most of us didn't know about. So he left a book behind. And in his book, uh, Alizar is about to go in in about 15 minutes here, an in-depth look at his book. This book is from the early 40s. 